Next up, we have Alive50. My FIDE rating has increased to 1764 last month and 1762 this month. This is equivalent to 1600 old FIDE. I'm excited about Dojo 3.0. Cool. So, uh, dude, you're, yeah, you're way up. You're ready to be in the next cohort above. Tactics? No, not there yet. Did do a tactics test, though. Okay. One thing that would be interesting, for example, about these tactics tests is these four metrics give you a pretty good indication of where you are. And if you did, let's say that was your first tactics test. Let's say you do some more, you do this, maybe focus on your puzzle rush survival a little bit. That'll give you a sense. If it's somewhere around here, maybe it's just 100 points higher, then you know that you're stronger at other things besides tactics, and it's really your tactics that needs work. So the idea of the tactics rating is to give you something to strive for, but also as a metric, you know, be like, how close am I to my cohort? Am I like lower or higher? That would tell you the focus you need to give to your tactics or not give to your tactics. All right, here we go. Clubs, no clubs, activity. All right, let's go down one. And we don't have a lot, so maybe no games. No games. Well alive. Bows, we need some games from you, buddy. We need some games. As I said, we have so many graduates today, I'm a little bit thankful that <laughs> we don't have a game. All right, Jamski is up next. Started playing chess in 2020. And I gotta say, if you started playing in 2020 and I'm already up to 1521, that is very impressive. Favorite chess activity is coffee and a good puzzle book. Oh, that's nice, I like, I like that too. Got a FIDE rating, that's cool. Dude, if you started 2020 and you have a FIDE rating of 1600, that's already really great. And the tactics, you did do a tactics test. And again, it's, I think what, we're, what I'm hoping to see with the graduates, the graduates shows a good barometer for me in how quickly this tactics rating thing is adopted. I'm guessing, for example, in Jamski's case, that they've done the tactics test, maybe one or two, but haven't done, paid attention to these things, you know. We just started it, you know. It's just something that started nine days ago. So it's not, you know, so I'm just hoping, let's say in a month or two, I start doing the graduate shows, that I really see more people who fleshed out where their tactics stand. Okay, clubs. Dojo down under, nice. Activity, lots of time spent, nice. And we're going to look at this 14 to 1500. 204 hours, very nice. Uh-huh. Yeah. If I, so, for example, I click the tactics. He did the Polgar Mates in two. Perfect time to test it now on the, in fact, we can see he, the count of 1090 to test it in the uh, test, in the test that we got here. And the test for 1500 plus is substantially harder than the one below. It would be good, too, if you've done up to 1090 to do the one below just to get a, a sense of it right? They're all problems, for mostly problems that you have done. Games. Got a nice list of games. 25, very nice. Good work. Round five of seven, round 90, 30. Okay. Really cool that Lauren and Charlie Carey, being better at chess, are talking as well. Let's mark this, and we'll say, oh, look at that. Something went wrong. <laughs> Something went wrong in there. I have a feeling it looked more like that without that big, probably somebody just put it in the wrong time. Still, um, <clears throat> that is a reasonable looking graph from both players. All right, fine, 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 D5. Right, my understanding of this position is that ED5 is the main move. 
And King B1 will saddle you with a weakened structure. Uh, but let's see how this goes, actually. So D, E, 4. Maybe King B1 is some fancy new move. I don't know. If it were to be a fancy move, it would. I would definitely want to know the, yeah, what our eval here is. So Queen D2, Knight E7, King H8, Rook D2. And you talk about Rook E8. Of course, E F makes maybe more sense. Right? E F. And we might have yeah, there might be some questions for us here. So I don't know. It I doesn't look great for white. Right? At least I don't see it yet. Because that rookie eight now will be a bit bigger deal. Okay, so here we go, 94. And now black trades it all down. And maybe they shouldn't. Probably they shouldn't. So in general, the problem with this kind of position for white is that it's, uh, white doesn't have control over this square. And so a good way for black to play, if they can, is to play a move like knight e5. Just to say that knight's glorious, I can later develop my stuff depending on where I want to go. Right? Okay, so maybe this gives you some chances. Now queen c7. And you talk about this being even looking. I mostly agree. Notice here that the pawn on e4, since it can't be blockaded by a knight, it's not, it's not such a big deal. right? Arguably, you're a little better here because you have control over the file. Okay, so queen c7. Snip. And now you go... Bishop d3. Bishop d3 doesn't look right to me. Um, well, maybe I'll uh, give it a chance. Just because you're giving up the d file. Okay. Good. And I don't know. I don't think they should allow this. h5. And good note. h5. You write, maybe this is required to put a stopper in white's attack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, notice here, if he plays h5, I don't quite know what we're doing, by the way. I really don't know. Yeah, if we don't have anything here, black's going to be better. You can put this queen here, too. Let's just briefly go back. First of all, maybe queen c7 is not a bad move. Um... Pop, pop. Maybe we gotta play h4 now. You know, bishop g4, bishop e2. I get it, you lose a tempo over there though. Yeah, it's not the happiest moment of our lives. But at least there, see, we will be able to meet any h5 with g4, which is very important in the game your bishop is poor on d3, right? So if we look, definitely h5 cannot be allowed. Good move. I don't know. hg might be winning on the spot. Bang! That isn't it. But what did you want him to do? You know, what did you want him to do? It's all, yeah, he can't take on d1. Boom. Okay. All right. So one thing we want to look at is really analyze if you could have knocked the dude out. So for example, G takes. Takes. Let's just say I take with a queen. Right? Probably this is forced. Wait a second. Okay, I mean, queen takes d1 is interesting, but then that's also a hell of a drug, dude. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hell of a drug. That's going to be very unpleasant for a peasant. K 
King F7. Check to the miserable king. King E8. In the worst case scenario, I got that one. Bang! Ah! Don't hurt me, bro! Yeah. Things have gone wrong. The milk has gone bad. So here, you didn't put them away. Frisky. Here he might, might live. Good. Notice now we're, re, we're re, well, that's fixing our previous mistake. He desperately wants to trade queens here and for that reason should consider queen b6. He's playing for some cheapo on the back rank. Queen e2. Nice move. Now he's done. That's what you get for playing with cheapos. Ah! Bang! Yeah. Okay, good. This isn't my best annotation effort. If Jesse goes through this game, more to work on in terms of variations and value weighted as highlighted by comments of dojoers. Okay, well said. Well said. Yeah. And I definitely think that if you go through that, hopefully my criticism or whatever was constructive, you can learn to be a pretty good attacker. You know? Um, and then, you know, for next time, you might get a, a feel for these positions. Um, my understanding of this position is like uh, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop d4, e5, bishop c5. At least that was the main line back in the day. I'm a cute guy and good at chess. You got it all. There we go, buddy. I'm an old man, dude. <laughs> I'm an old man. <clears throat> All right, so that's really cool. So congratulations to Jamski. Good work with the annotations. And next up we have William Kazan. All right. Software engineer from Brazil. Okay. Now a little bit of a bummer that the it's not quite there. We definitely think your tactics rating is probably higher than 25. No, next time he graduates, it'll be higher than that. All right, let's take a look. Clubs, Dojo Brazil, activity, got a little bit. Games, okay. This is KW, I don't know which one to pick. So, I'll mark this as one reviewed. And uh-oh, uh-oh, it looks like this looks like we got some time fiends. If this is true, it means they're not thinking at all, dude. Okay, first of all, I want to say good setup. You can totally play this way. Knight h6 is definitely weird. Notice, though, that neither player is really thinking. They're just blitzing. F5. That's a reasonable looking move. Yeah, that's probably wrong. Good. Mm. Okay, so <clears throat> what's weird about this, first of all, in this position, you should really <clears throat> be tanking a little bit and thinking about finding a way to knock black out. So in your variation, you end up losing a tempo and encouraging king h8 to rook g8. And queen e1 is kind of the typical move in this kind of position, but yeah, you haven't thought it through about what to do. And that, now you say the computer says queen d2. Um, let me suggest there was a reason you didn't play queen d2, and that's because you were probably concerned rightly about this move. Um, and, you know, I guess our default here is queen f2 with a claim that we're crushing the fool because our king is so much safer than blacks. But yeah, it looks, looks terrible. Okay. So, he blunders and he just resigns. <laughs> well, what are you resigning for, buddy? You know? 
I get it that your life isn't that great here, but there's no reason to resign. You know, play Queen E7 or something. Don't resign yet. Okay, so there it is. Let's say the obvious. KWVWP. If you slow it down, buddy, you're going to be a lot better. You, this was played as a blitz game. All right, <clears throat> let's move on to the next. So now we have Mind Voxel. Mind says, I really enjoy the access to the materials so far. It's also a great value to have games reviewed by GM like Jesse on stream. Thank you very much. I think what I would like to see improved relates to the training program implementation on the site. I think wherever possible, task completion should be automated. For example, if I complete a round of Puzzle Rush, it would be ideal if the dojo pulled the score from Chesscom or Early Chess's API. Good. I'm not very motivated to mark tasks such as that complete manually. <clears throat> okay, good. <clears throat> and in fact, what I can tell you is our genius coder has figured out that that is possible to do for the Puzzle Rush five minutes, though for reasons not totally clear, uh, not possible for the survival. And that just has to do with the way Chesscom set it up. Um, but in hopefully in the near future, what will happen is the dojo, it's your PR on the five minute will get queried, well, I don't know, once a day or whatever, and then it'll be brought back. And that's key to the tactics rating. So we see where everyone stands. All right, so here we go. Mind Voxel, kind of a cool name. Senior backend web developer in my early 30s. Been playing on and off online for roughly seven years. I'm at a significant rating plateau. Having trouble reaching 2000 Lee Chess Rapid, my peak is 1977. I embarrassingly have never played a rated OTB, but I plan on fixing that soon. All right, that's a great synopsis. Definitely agree that if you can get a um, OTB game in, that will definitely help you achieve your dream or at least your short-term dream, which appears to be 2,000 Lee Chess. The dojo, by the way, the, the, the whole idea of the training program is that most people will graduate um, be well before they've completed all the training requirements. But the training program requirements are built around the idea of somebody who had, as at a plat is at a plateau and then getting them that 100 points, that all that work, if you did it, our belief, strong belief is if you actually did all that work, you would make it to the next level. The higher you get up in the ratings, obviously the more work it's gonna take because it's more competitive. Okay, do we got a tactics? Not yet, not yet. Um, by the way, for the under 1500 at the end of the month, we are gonna have this next tactics test. So at the end of the month, uh, he will have this one and this one. All right, so clubs, coders. Oh, in Maryland. I'm in, I'm in that one, dude. I'm in the Maryland one. So activity. Maybe someday I'll see him at his first tournament. And so that's the work that they've done. Looks good. Um, we could dream about some... Uh, some other things in there. This is, I think, well, probably to get to the next level, you are going to need to do a lot more in here. Maybe you're not logging it as well. All right, games. And here we go. Mindset by Dave. Let's mark it as review before the boomer gem forgets. And what we are definitely seeing here is that white did not take their time. <clears throat> so, the easiest thing I can say for your improvement is if you slow down, it's going to help a lot. Let's go into it. Boom. Now, maybe you're black here. Hold on. <clears throat> Let me just check something. Well, I don't know. For whatever reason, because it said mindset and this says mind voxel, I was assuming that he was white, but maybe he's actually black here. So I think that's what's going on. Let's flip it. It is an odd looking move. 
And these players have, you know, grand dreams of playing for G4 and E4 and all this other stuff. The, if there's a value to it, it's that it takes away the square, both squares from the knight on F6. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. And you're doing fine. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. Castles. Now, this one's a little frisky. There's no rush for you to castle. And we could consider moves like c5, knight bd7, that kind of thing. This one concerns me because now maybe the h pawn is going to suffer. And that's indeed like he puts pressure on your h pawn right away. Okay. Now, still, what needs to be acknowledged is when dude plays uh, takes and you take, you have gained a developing move. And right here, you can think about uh, e5. Does it work? I don't know, but it's what we want to think about. And if it doesn't work, you can think about knight d7. This doesn't look right, though, because you're just, it's not, that ain't it. That ain't it. That's too, what are we doing? Um, yeah. So this is an example where you're definitely moving way too fast and you would have ideas to do other things if you took a second. A5. To me, E5 looks very nice. Okay. Snip. Snip. Okay. Queen D3. And now for sure you want to play e5. For sure. Look at this move. Bam! You're killing him. You're killing him. Oh, if you'd taken a moment, Baus, you would have found that. You're just hurting him real bad. Everything's, you know, his whole situation's falling apart. He thought pawns were people by taking on g6. But it turns out the rook is a pretty cool thing. So, and king h7, I wouldn't want to do either. King h7, you got to worry about knight h5 or something like that. <clears throat> and so the reason to think that you're probably <clears throat> in trouble here, <clears throat> excuse me, is really, yeah, your structure's all funny. Your df1. Mm -hmm. Maybe rook de1 is better, I agree. But now he goes here. We've got to believe in the white position, though. F4, okay. A little frisky, but I don't know what, quite what we're doing. Good move. Good move. Now, here's an interesting point. I think rook takes F5 is probably what you want to do to keep the rooks active. Good move. Good move. Good move. Queen e7. Now I'm just wondering if this is act to what extent this is actually a cold shower. Right? So you took it and you say, I'm really kicking myself here because I still had plenty of time on the clock. Yeah, so look at this. You play queen e7 in, in, in a minute, and now your position's just completely hosed. <clears throat> and yeah, I don't know, by the way, like just looking at it, I don't know if it's a perpetual. I have no idea, but I know that it's something to look at. Yeah, that's a perpetual boss. Very clean perpetual. <laughs> yep, okay. So... As I said at the beginning, I didn't even need to see these moves. I knew that it was all about you going too quickly. And one of the things I think you mentioned, right, about the uh, playing an OTB is that when you're playing online, you're going to be distracted. Your opponents are moving too fast, you know. 
So that's where your next level of improvement is going to come. And it's not just OTB, it's moving slower, but playing the OTB will help you slow it down. All right, let's keep going. This is Jaybird. Jaybird has graduated a thousand times. And 14.59, really nice um, progress. Ratings, we got, we got ourselves somebody who did their tactics rating. Yeah. Mm. Super cool. Super cool. Okay. So, um, the ratings look reasonable. Probably if they played a little puzzle survival, they would get that up. We'd be more consonant with these other ratings. And then soon there'll be another, there'll be an actual tactics test for the under 1500 crew. Clubs, no, activity. Lots of activity, Baus. Lots. Jaybird's bringing it. Now, these are all cohorts, but we want to see what they did to make it. 150 hours. Good. Nice macro distribution. Not so much in the middle games of strategy. Um, yeah. So we'll see if they're missing that when we look at their games, the middle game strategy. Looks like online games. So mark this as reviewed. And <clears throat> well, unless white is completely winning by move 17, you can see what happened. They just checked out. They're just moving and blitzing and, and critzing. Critzen and schnitzen and blitzen. A little funky. Poor move. Now his knight's poor. Now you're playing for space. We can talk about other moves there. Attilo Terso, thank you for rating. Me and Attilo go way back. He was part of this chess lecture thing I did ages ago. H4, <clears throat> unnecessary. It's an example of a move that doesn't need to be played. So like queen d2 makes some sense. You know, h4 doesn't really help. <clears throat> C6 does make some sense. He wants to maybe play for b5. Unless you're going to sack on h5, that move also doesn't make sense. b5. Okay, good. He's trying to get some juice on you over there. Queen a5, maybe knight d7 first. You go this way. That move doesn't feel right to me. Mm -mm. Knight, knight d7 looked better for him. All right. Now, one of the things I, one of the reasons I don't like it is it now gives your knight on g3 a job by keeping the knight on f5 out. Good move. B4 is also a thought. All right, now maybe, now you're gonna, maybe we're gonna do it, boss. Now maybe we're gonna do it. And now you play rook c1. <clears throat> now, Don't you just want to take it? Don't you just want to do it, buddy? One of the things that will be interesting about the sack <clears throat> and maybe you should play bishop h3 first, but it'll be interesting as it, it's going to be a long-term sack. Knight f5, and now he blows it. This is a nice variation here. a5, let's take a look. Boom. 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 Holy moly. Dang. Dang, buddy. <clears throat> That's the real deal right there. <clears throat> That's a nice variation. Mm -hmm. So I think what this means is the kid needs to play something like queen c6 or maybe knight f8 to try to hold his coconuts together. One thing I'm talking about when I say the long-term aspect of it is... I don't know which knight to take with right away, but let's just say I do it this way. And I take, and I take, I'm going to move the queen back. I don't know where yet. And then I'm going to be playing for h5. And the question is, is black going to have some juice over there on the queen side while I'm getting this going? It's a really interesting question. This is a nice uh, tactical sequence. 
Bang! <coughs> it does look winning. Knight f8. Boom! Nice move. I really like that because it takes away c8. Oh, yeah. Hard to know what black should do. Mm hmm. Oh, it's just so pretty. Thank you very much. Okay, great. You guys, I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back. Okay, so that was um, Jaybird. Very nice finish to that game. He definitely was moving too fast. You know what? Sometimes what happens when you get those jazzy positions, you're just so excited that you can't even think straight. You're just like, I gotta get him, I gotta get him. But that's where you really do need to start calculating. All right, so next up we have Alex. Shout out to my training partner, Jay Cook, Cook MTB on Discord, who graciously wakes up early Friday mornings to spar and study with me. Having structure to follow has made improving my chest so much more fun when I remember it being, than I remember it being when I was younger. I used to love playing and hate studying. Now I love the studying just as much as the playing. I like picking a focus for the week and then trying to touch that focus every day. The rating boost this month came from winning a G25 at my local club. I never could have imagined winning a tournament. Very nice, Alex. Okay. Strength coach. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> okay. So super cool. There's a lot of people in the dojo who are doing strength stuff. Um, I think one, that, one thing actually, you know, it's interesting. Eventually we're gonna come up with like a, a more regimented study plan for those who want it. And it's really like from the strength world, it's, you know, like hit this on Monday, this on Tuesday, that kind of thing. Which makes more sense in the strength world because, you know, you don't want to train the same thing two days in a row. Whereas chess, if you did tactics two days in a row, it's not the worst thing, right? Whereas, you know, you don't want to be doing your hectic deadlift three days in a row. You know, give it a rest, buddy. Let your body recover. Okay. Still, uh, I think it what the dojo appeals to the sensibility of the strength person. You know, and there's even things, you know, when designing the program that I feel like I brought in, I'm not really into, I do CrossFit with a lot of strength stuff, but just the notion of um, some of the things I think from that world unconsciously came from my brain into the program. <laughs> so it's in there in a certain way. <clears throat> Jesse will have to start making this a three day show. I know, dude. I know, dude. All right, here we go. First, let's take a look at the tactics rating. That hasn't been sussed out yet, but okay. Clubs, coders, nice. Activity. All right, we're gonna go back one. So, wait. So we're gonna look for 13, 14. Dude did 43 hours. Did a lot of end game. Well, this, this is weird, because this says a lot of end game, but then not so much over here. Maybe there's a disparity there. Maybe it was a... Uh, you know, cataloged in the time. Maybe that's where the sparring is happening. No, it's a Silman. In any case, here we go. Games. Ooh, and this is going to be one. I bet this is going to be from his recent tournament. This might be a game 25. A rematch. Mr. Crawford and I had a game at the same event, uh, event a month prior where I lost. GM Cry reviewed that game, and I learned a lot from it. There's a link to it. I think I gave him a better game here because he actually used up his whole clock time where only used half of it last month. All right, we're playing some higher rated player. And we're gonna get a rook end game. Okay, good. So we'll mark this as reviewed and then we'll look. Both players used their time. And this is a 130. So this is a great uh, game to look at. So here we go. Okay, it's fine. Uh-huh. And bishop b7 looks more normal, but your move d5 can't be wrong. Poop, poop, e3, knight d7. Okay. 
fine, fine, fine. And now you say this seems like a wasted tempo. Right. Now, the, this is a fascinating position. And I think we've transposed to um, some uh, lines or whatever that come about in a different way. White needs to come up with a plan here and then kind of, let's say he punts with h3. Um, the, so um, one question for me is, would knight e5 be a good move? I'm not sure. We'd have to analyze it. But since he, <laughs> your opponent is not the subject here and you are, I'll say here you have some interesting choices. You talk about knight f8, you played knight e4, and the other move we want to definitely consider is yield c5. That's definitely on our agenda. And the point here is that um, we want to think about, first of all, can we play it? Is it tactically feasible? And if, if it is, then those hanging points are potentially strong. We would want to analyze this variation. Is that annoying? I don't know. We'd have to look at it. You know, that might be annoying. Okay, you played knight e4, and the move, by the way, it, I would say the two default plans here would be knight e4 and c5. Those would be the two default plans. So I believe in this. Um, dude plays bishop f4. I do have a question about this, though. So bishop e7. Queen e7, knight e4, d e4. Is it insane for him to take here? We're just, we're just looking. Maybe it is. <laughs> okay, maybe it's insane. I'm just looking. So <clears throat> if rook b8, I'd be concerned about this. Bishop b5. So let's just imagine bishop c8 for a second. probably is fine for you. Okay. That was my concern. If that isn't there, I don't know why knight e4 is a bad move. So, bishop f4, bishop d6, and that move I don't like. Um, your default move should definitely be c5 here. Bang! Yeah. And you're doing great. You're doing great. And on DC, you have a choice between BC and knight takes C5. Both of them look very promising to me. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It looks pretty good. Perhaps we could be worried about knight B5, but I'm just going to go ahead and say now I don't really believe it. Probably rook C8. Okay, so you have... Um, it was just funny. We were talking about Nimzovich recently. I did a video about the books. We added the program. We never had Nimzovich because people are so upset by Nimzovich. But anyways, Nimzovich has this great chapter called The Isolated Queen Pawn and Its Descendants. And so this is very much... They're related. And one of the descendants is the hanging pawns of C5. You don't really want to trade the miners here. Uh, we would rather just get that big old space factory going. I like calling it a space factory. Okay. So now white is better. And plays knight b5. Okay. Now it's a little uncomfortable. Knight takes, bishop takes, and you play a6. You talk about rook e6. Good. Boom. 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 Okay. Um. <laughs> the. You might be. Yeah, you're in, you're in big trouble now because he has a, not only not only you know he's got a simple plan to deal with um, 
to deal with you. <laughs> so rook e6, queen c2. And now um, a move I'd be interested for you here would be knight c5. That would ans ask him some interesting questions. Um, and you can see that if he takes, the knight controls this, and we're still worse, but, you know, we can dream here. And it's not so, It's with our knight on the e6, it's going to be really hard for him to tickle uh, us to death. <laughs> to tickle us to death. <clears throat> okay, so rook c8, passive. Okay. This is also passive. And this allows the knight in. Queen e8. Queen b7. So probably queen b7 is fine, but rook c1 should be the guy's default move. It's going to be very hard for you to move in that endgame. Queen b7. Knight d7. Knight takes queen takes queen. So now, honestly, you should be happy that you're you gave up the pawn. So basically, like white cashed in a lot of their positional advantage to achieve this. Here you play queen d8, and they play a4, which is not uh, that wasn't the move I was worried about. And now you play rook. A8. Here I think, uh, for, I was going to say, you, yeah, here you, you should at least try C5. I don't know if it's any good. Yeah, let's try C5. Rook A8. Okay. Okay. Rook A8. I'm going to give you props for that, at least in terms of feel. Because if you don't play actively, you're just going to get wasted. And on rook c8, uh, it's going to be a hard road. On rook e7, like b4, both of those moves, b4 and a5, are going to come. So it's really a hard business. And here I think we should be very happy that he plays b3 and you get to play rook a7. Yeah, here you might survive. Now, the one question I have is, how do we feel about this? Maybe you're going to be okay because you have rook b4. Maybe it's totally fine for you. So, rook a8, I'll give that an exclam. Good. Boom, boom, boom. Frisky. That's a poor move. Okay, so e4 may be, uh, may be nice. But it might also be nice for you. So one of the things I want to really stress is, more than anything, we want activity. Right? We want activity. And yes, he's probably better than us because of... Uh, his rook being more active. It's not just he's up a pawn. By the way, I have an idea for you here. King g3, why don't we go this way? Yeah, actually, you wrote it. Good. And then here, and then here. And then the real point to see is that when you achieve c5, your rook gets free. Your rook gets free. Holy moly. So that was the good, good annotations. Good annotations. E4, maybe an X lab. And here I don't like it, but honestly, it's. Well, what should you do? You play King E7. <laughs> you gotta go over there, man. You gotta go back. Well, uh, yeah, now we're just now we're just uh getting hosed here. Um so here the guy could play rook c5. Check. Oh, man. That's brutal. He did his Pogar mates. Okay. That was, I think, a really good annotation. Shows 
not only what it um, means to play against a higher rated player, but also, you know, there was some positional problems you had. Um, and you also could see that White did a thing where he bailed out into the end game up, up a pawn instead of keeping up the positional pressure with the queen b7 move. So that was kind of that's just kind of a difference in skill level. He found this. This is great. Um, I like your use of time. Really good. And you had a shot at the end. I like your annotations, and in particular, with where you put in King F6 uh, as a mistake, right? Because yes, you are fully in the game here after King E7. Remember, to beat you, he needs two advantages, right? In an endgame, he needs two advantages. Right now, he has one. He's up a pawn. But with King E7, D6, you're in position to fix your coconut over here, right? Okay, so, um, good, well done. And next up we have David Rockliffe. David did a lot of work, let's take a look. 1401, dude is, look at this, the dude has just moved up. Hasn't done the tactics yet, okay. Clubs, UK, all right, activity. Lots of game analysis, and we're going to just go down one cohort here, 213, 14. Yeah, mega game analysis is going on. So let's take a look. This was played at the end of March. We'll hit this as review. Do we have times? We do. Looks like it's played a little too fast by both sides. Um, so, you're doing fine, and then e5, maybe, maybe e5, knight c3 looks more natural. And I think if you were going to play this position, you probably need to sack the pawn with e6. Maybe you could also play bishop f4. Okay, but your opponent blunders with queen b6. Of course they should win the pawn. And now, some, now it just gets weird. So, <clears throat> Dave, you're doing fine, okay? Your opponent's doing weird stuff. Plays h5. So what this shows us is that your opponent has no respect for time. None. And the only reason he's playing e6 here is he sees the threat of knight d5. But e6 needed to be played ages ago. <clears throat> All right, this one I'm going to yell at you at. Okay? Uh, we are not afraid of them taking the pawn. Those, that poor dude is miles away from castling. Right? So uh, our candidate moves should be h3. Knight e4, <clears throat> maybe queen e2 as well. <clears throat> and you're doing just great. You're doing great. The guy has a lot of problems. This is a waste of time. Good. Waste of time. So at this level, right, you're going to see a lot of people, not so much hanging pieces, but definitely hanging tempi. I like h3 still. I don't know why we're not kicking that fool away. Kind of interesting. Uh huh. And now you play ninety four. Okay. One interesting tactical variation would be Bishop G five takes. I think that's forced. Takes, and I don't think they can get away with taking on E five. If they castle, we're going to play queen h5 and play for mate. So here, though, here they cannot take with the queen because of mate takes. And then, I, I don't know, we're just crushing him. That's just crushing. So knight e4, knight 
d6. So here, <laughs> um, I still like your position. But first of all, Black, what are you doing, v5? There's no respect for time. He's got to be thinking about maybe snagging, snaggling your bishop over there. You know, bishop e7. That ain't it. Finally, good. I still, I still want a bishop g5, by the way, but you're doing great here. Do I understand that move? I'm not sure. You're doing great. And now he just goes to a bad end game. All right, so you're doing beautifully. No one knows what that move does. You say thank you very much. But here, look, when you say you don't know why he let you take the pawn, now his rook gets activated, boss. So no, we didn't want to take the pawn. We could play a move like a4 first. And now his rook's active. Oh my god, this dude's weird. He's freaking me out. He needs to play uh, rook b2 pronto. Good move. I don't know if g3 helps you. That wasn't it. That wasn't it. Oh, this should be winning for you. Boom. 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 Very nice. Completely winning. And now you're going to go clean it up. Good. So, Dave Raw. <clears throat> Could, there's in terms of the annotations you could definitely do more it will help you a lot also notice that at this level we're seeing players just give away time and that's one of the things i really want to stress is that from zero to one thousand they'll be giving you time and pieces but it'll be the free pieces that determine your progress here after one thousand they're not going to give you so many free pieces but they're going to give you tempi out the wazoo Okay, so that's why uh, learning how to play against these kinds of fools will greatly, you know, improve your game. All right, good job. And let's keep going. That was Dave Raw. There's Solitude. Solitude's been waiting forever over here. So <laughs> just starting as AC Slater. Okay, so... A lot of times we see when they just start, they move up a notch. A lot of, no tactics, rating, nothing, games, no. So AC Slater just started. Next up we have Latrunculus Secundus. Latrunculus the second. So, wow, look at all that. Somehow, weird things are happening. Weird things are happening, Latrunculus. So I think Latrunculus, I don't know what's going on. Trunculus has some games, but I don't understand what's happening. So 1332. Okay, I don't know. It's so weird. He's got all these icons over here. So we need to get the tactics rating. Clubs. Okay. Oh, lots of clubs, dude. Lots of clubs. Activity. We'll see. It's weird. It's like, I don't know what's going on with the activity. But we will look at a game here from the Trunculus. Round two of the Lone Wolf. Okay. Let's mark it and then we'll look. It's not available for the time. Weird. Knight c6. In general, you want to play bishop d7 because if they take, you win a tempo when you take back. Weird. What is white doing, by the way? They're giving you time. A6, I don't like too much because you're giving them a tempo. They should take. Um, if you play bishop, the question would be bishop f5 because then you have an amazing French with your, you're going to play e6 next. You'll be uh, with your pawn on the right side of the board. You can start with queen c7 too. Terrible move. Good move. Snip, thank you very much. Okay. CD. Knight d4. Good move. Good move. Good move. Castles. Fine. Rook e1. Knight f3. Good move. Yeah, and now you're winning this position. 
Also, uh, they needed to play knight d takes f3 instead of queen takes f3. A good move. Okay, f e a. <clears throat> okay. Terrible. Thank you very much. Always say thank you. <laughs> I always say thank you. And now you're up a thousand, a thousand pieskis. Thank you very much. Yeah. G6 seems fine. Um, in general, we want to put our pawns on the same, on the opposite color of our bishop. So stockfish, smockfish, we just in general want to put it that way. Why? So that the pawns control the light and your bishop controls the dark. Also, here you with g6, you have options to play e5 later and the knight not being able to come to f5. White resigns. Well, I don't know if he should resign, but, you know, I feel, I feel the guy's pain. You know, I do. Lear, I acknowledge your comments, buddy. And you're absolutely right about G6. It's funny, I think about it as Capablanca's rule. But if Tarash said it, you know. Well, he might have said the thing about biting on the granite, but the opposite color of the bishop is a thing that I think of Capablanca as at least formulating first. <clears throat> I did a video ages ago called Capablanca's Rule. Okay, so Latrunculus, dude, welcome to the dojo. Here we go. Next up, we have, I don't know, Jestu. And Jestu has been on the show before. 1400. We got some tactics ratings. Nice. Okay, it's looking good. Again, uh, at the end of the month, hopefully there'll be another little window here for a tactics test for our people between 1,000 and 1,500. Very encouraging graph. Sicilian spy, good. Activity, nice. And we're gonna go back one. Dude did four hours of work. Well, wow, it's easy life. He can get up to 100 more, more points with just four hours of work. And this was submitted just a second ago. This is just two. Here we go. Let's say, Mark, this is reviewed. And we'll say, uh-oh. So typical of online games, my friends. You can just see it. Like, first of all, the dojo player took longer, but still didn't take that much. This player, they're playing online. There's no reason. There's no, look, the dude ends, the dude ends with about the same amount of time as when they start. You know, what are you doing? Why don't you just play Blitz five minutes if it's gonna be that way? Okay, check to the miserable king. Bishop d7. This actually happened with uh, Naka against Fabi, right? At the candidates. Um, yeah, all right, a6, now white should be better. There was a lot of other moves, knight e4, right. Still knight e4, nobody's seeing it. Knight e3, good. Now you, white is better because you uh, control d5. Notice, black, dude, not thinking at all. Look at that. Look at all that time black has. Simple and strong. Thank you very much. That isn't it. C3 is clever. Okay, you could have played bishop b3 too. No rush, but I like this. Um, so king h8 is required. He plays queen f7. You took. Very good. Knight a5. Good. Queen d1. Now that has to be said that... Um, <laughs> He definitely needs to play queen f5 here. And if, <clears throat> I just want to stress actually. So this position, you're doing great. Queen b3 is a tricky move, playing for tricks. And the problem is when you think about it, which you did, this knight is terrible because you dominated him, right? So we do not want to allow that knight to be active at all. 
And that's why <clears throat> we are kind of encouraging him to later play knight a5 by playing queen b3. But that's a very nice move. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Oh, it's just now it's just so sweet. You know, so sweet. Nobody knows. Good move. Nobody knows. Good move. Good move. And nobody knows what he's threatening. Um, yeah, and now what do you got? You got this beautiful light square pressure. B5. Bang! Bang! I think he was toast anyway, but you're doing great. F6. Oh, no. That, that wasn't nice. Queen A7. Playing for a trick. Boom. Yeah, Queen E6 was stronger, but even you you might have missed that, but in any case, he's still toast. So very nice. So look, if, if anything, this should be just an argument for people to say, right, when I'm playing these chumps online, yes, I need to waste them, but also my own chess improvement is hindered by these chumps because I'm not able to get quality thinking time in because they're just moving like animals, making stupid little one move threats. What are you doing? What are you doing? And then they say move faster in the chat. That's right, dude. Uh... Okay. So next up we have Solitude who's perhaps still in the chat. You know, I started by the way with the highest rated and worked my way downwards. In other shows, every other show I've started from the bottom and worked up and Solitude came in and was like, dude, when am I up? Have I missed myself? Well, oh, just, just hours later, Solitude, we're at you, buddy. Summer of Solitude's here. Solitude says, <clears throat> finally did it. Yay. When you get to the top of the scoreboard, you start to worry if you ever will. Now I just need to actually keep up this rating. What did it for me was finally letting go of my terrible blitz habit. I'm so addicted to it, but it teaches me bad habits. Decided to stop entirely and just play longer games. Welcome to the dojo. Suddenly, I just won every game I played this week and finally reached the rating. Love the structure of the dojo. I'm not the best with social interactions. Me neither. So struggling a bit with all things that require that, but getting better and had some post-mortems. The best is to go sit in front of my chessboard every morning with a cup of coffee and work through Polgar puzzles or through the books. Logical chess move by move was such a treat. So funny, man. That book, we did the stats analysis, and that was the one most correlated to gains. The thing that helped me the most was that I was lucky enough to have Jesse review three of my games where I was the opponent. Learned so much. Also, the people have been great. It's an amazing community. Beautiful. Okay. South African. Nice. Um... 18, so 13, 16, made it. Look at that. Boom. Stop playing Blitz and look what happens. Bang. This was the Blitz period of Solitude's life. <laughs> Bang. Things made a change. We got ratings a little bit. Okay. So clubs, South African. Nice. Okay. Activity. That's a lot of activity. So Summer, I want to say this is the kind of thing that really inspires me. Like when somebody really struggles because as i'm struggling now and makes it you know really nice to see it <laughs> your macro distribution's great just a little bit of openings you know everything else in there let's just poke around a little bit so we got the tactics we got the made in twos nice to 10 20. Mm -hmm. now you have the chance to do those polgar puzzles by the way so that's good winning chess tactics good and then we did logical chess oh, brilliant and some end games. Very well done. Okay, I'm pumped. Um, one cool thing, actually, just an interesting question for us watching you is will you continue to progress now that you've given up the terrible blitz habit? Games. All right, so here we go. Boom. Game four of the Dojo Classical. All right, let's just mark this and then we'll go over here. Both sides moving a little fast, you know, but I don't know, the game ended. Maybe I shouldn't, I, maybe, I'm not going to say anything. So, because the game did end fairly quickly. 
This is usually a mistake. It's probably the most common move you'll see. It's a mistake for two reasons. Um, one, that um, knight e4 is now possible, but also c6, b5 will accelerate your play on the queen side. And you go for it here with c6. And good notes. Early pawn pushes in the center are ideal for me, overextending. Mm -hmm. So let's just say d5 is not it. It loses a tempo and it blocks the bishop on uh, c4. Frisky. Boom. Boom. And even if that is their move, uh, this is such a positional win for you to gain this, you know, that you can't say it was a, that you made a mistake. Okay, that I don't like. Um, so let's think about it. The bishop on b3 is dead. The knight on a4, pff, crispy critter, right? So that's why c5, I don't, know, I don't think he's going to live that long, you know. It's not going to work out for the dude. Now, your position is still amazing, but I like c5. Castles, 92. And I still like c5. Bishop b7. Okay. c3. a5. Queen d2. And now, if here, playing c5 wouldn't feel right because you've already committed your bishop to b7. Notice, though, that... When you, now, like, if you don't play c5, this bishop lives. You know, it's doing something. And here, the crime is, though, that when you take, you liberate the knight on a4, right? It gets to come back. And now white isn't doing that terribly here. And now he's not doing so bad. But then they help you out with that move. Of course, they should castle. It shouldn't even be a question. They need to castle. What are you doing? What is he doing? And then well, let's just see white here. Yeah, he, he thought for like a minute and he was like, YOLO, buddy. YOLO. All right, you play e6, which is totally reasonable. Um, the other move to consider, though, here is knight e5. With this little threat. You know, I said it ain't looking good for this guy. I'll tell you that. But this is very sensible. And they give you the bishop. And now you got this bishop pair. And um, I think you're, honestly, you should be winning this position. Castles. Queen c7. Right. Um, So, queen b6 looks great for you, right? Let's say queen b6, let's say they take this thing. I don't know, play this move, you know? What is, the, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't have an answer, you know? Holy moly, what's this person doing? b3, let's, let's bring in the other rook. Let's have a little fiesta over here, you know? Let's get the party going. Let's get, ah, we're killing him. Right, so this gives him a tempo on this whole situation. And now another quick but terrible move with f4. Good. Check to the miserable king, and now you're just killing him. Yeah, that's just goodbye, Lucy. This is what, this, you should tell him after the game, you've been like, Baus, maybe you should think next time. Here by the queen, h2 is fine, but I like a4 much better. Just completely wasting him. Okay. So, that was good. That was a good game. And, you know, you're going to have, let's say this is a great opening to play. You're going to get this mistake Probably until you reach the 1500 cohort or some, maybe 1600 cohort. And then understanding how to play against it is important. You literally will get it again and again and again. I think one thing is kind of interesting is this is like, let's call it the book move, but 
a lot of people feel uncomfortable with this position. It's fine, but you know, you have to feel comfortable with this position. So you don't have to do it. You could play this thing and then I prefer castling first, but you're gonna get weird moves like this where they don't understand what's going on. And what should they be doing? They should be developing. <laughs> developing. <clears throat> Thank you, Summer of Solitude, for being in the program. All right, cool, let's move on. And now we have Cheese Wizard. Found the Polgar Mates to be the most helpful. I was on a downward trend on my rating. However, the discipline I got from calculating almost 800 puzzles was immensely helpful. It retained the way my mind was able to grip the board and calculate lines where before I was too lazy slash incapable of maintaining the focus. Well said. So this is the cheese wizard here. And dude has gone up. You know, maybe not quite made it there. Uh, tactics. He's done his Polgar mate test. And because he did it, he's way up there. That's pretty good. So, maybe it wasn't time to graduate, but we're not saying anything. This is Dojo 1.0, so that's cool. Indiana, Hoosiers in the Dojo, okay. Activity, looking good. That's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. All right, games. And then we're dealing with Xavier here. Uh-oh, that wasn't it. Hold on. Xavier, okay, you did some work here. Maybe the first the first game we just didn't have time yet to do anything with it. So we'll mark this is reviewed. We don't have the clock time. So <laughs> boom, boom. Right, that doesn't look right. <clears throat> Rook e8. Now it's looking questionable. Rook. The queen d4, c5. Um, let's say queen e7 is also an interesting move. Snippos. Queen e7. And we lost a pawn. Okay. Queen g3. Okay, interesting position. Um... The simple move would be for them to play uh, queen g3, but I understand where you're going with this. So. King h8 maybe is what he should do. He goes here. Interesting. He now takes. And now it's an interesting question of do you have full compensation? This is a terrible move. That isn't it, Mouse. <laughs> he, he just let your rook in. What are you doing? So um, you mentioned a variation earlier that looked like this. And that's a cool looking variation. That's exactly what you should be looking for. Um, It's maybe too frisky, but that's an interesting thought for black. This ain't it though. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. And now you went for it with rook takes c7. That's a bold move. So let's just say rook takes d8. We know you're going to be better there. Um... Good move. And probably you just want to play rook h2 because rook h7, I think you lose with rook takes d3. But just rook h2, you take the thing next, you're going to be up. Uh, I, actually, it's not, it's not that simple. We have to just acknowledge. <laughs> it's not as simple as we wanted it to be. So, okay, this rook c7 is the most exciting you're letting him do this. This is giving me a little heartache here. I just got to say. King here. And now rook dd1 was played. Uh, okay. So. 
uh, I would say you're probably lost here because I don't see how you deal with the pen. Yeah, I just long-term don't see how you deal with the pen. So Rook B8 is a very good-looking move here for Black. Probably moving the bishop almost anywhere, like bishop e4. And then I don't understand why... Oh, I get it. I get it. So we're saying that on rook b7, black wanted rook b1. Okay, let's look at, look at that variation for a second. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. And you say this trick picks up the exchange and most likely the game. But for whom, right? It's uh, black. Black looks fine here. So rook g1, and now it's a huge blunder for them to play rook takes f1. Massive blunder. So imagine we just move the bishop somewhere. I don't even know where to go yet, okay? I don't know, but we're going to move it somewhere. Bishop e4. No, our coconuts are cooked. The good news is we could play bishop d3, rook here, rook here. And although we are crispy critters here, uh, we have some chances to hold on. Yeah, we do. We got a couple chances to hold on. This is horrendous, though. Good move. And now you have the active king and the active rook in the endgame. Boom, that is a nice move. Boom, we're running, baby. Send the boy running, that well said. Rook g3. Um, and you played the very natural a5. It's hard to imagine why that's wrong. And you're talking about rook e7 to prevent rook e3. Maybe, okay, okay. Rook e7 would truly be next level move here. Let's put that on the board. Very nice move. See, what he's saying is the black rook cannot easily come back. <clears throat> now, I'm not 100% yet, because it could go like this. Ah, it's tricky, though. It's, there's tricks. For example, here, here, here. <clears throat> and dude is not yet ready to play king g7, the poor bastard. Oh, don't call him that. Um, Anyway, so here, here, <clears throat> here. Check to the miserable king. It looks, it looks winning. Okay, a5, h5. You could still play rook e7. And you give a nice variation, rook e3, a6, rook e6. Rook a8, king g7, here. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just look for a second. Boom, 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 boom. We might be toast here, by the way. <laughs> we might be gone. <laughs> yeah, we're gone here. Okay. So he misses it. It'd be great to have the time here to know what the situation was. Rook e7, very nice. Thank you very much. And then here you need to tell him welcome to the dojo. All right, well done. So that was the cheese wizard. Cheese wizard's been doing some good annotations. That all looks pretty good, man. Yeah, really cool too that the Polgar mates worked out for him. All right, dude, we are not even close to done. I'm having a heart attack. Look at that. I got like 10 more to do, buddy. Oh, man. Oh, man I'm dying over here. Okay. Hopefully some of these people don't have games. <laughs> All right, 1327. Well done. Rating. It's not there yet. Clubs. No activity. Games. No games. Thank you, Silas. Anyways, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> want to win bad. I think forcing myself to play more slow OTB and analyzing them has been a huge help. 
I would have never have annotated games on my own or done postmortems without having it assigned either. Oh, that's genius. All right. 1392, looking great, looking ready to graduate again. Haven't done the ratings, hasn't done the tactics test yet. Clubs, no, activity, done a bit, yeah, looking good. Want to win bad, has, oh, hasn't done any games. Well, want to win bad. I want you to have games at this particular moment in my life. You know, I'm concerned about making it through this show, so I'm mildly thankful that you don't have any games. I'm going to take a quick break, and I'll be right back. All right, my friends, we are back. I'm, I'm back with a better attitude. I feel like you guys were persecuting me by all these graduations, dude. You know? <laughs> but I'm back. And Anders, oh, look at this, dude. 127 points of work. Program has really helped me structure my chess training. A lot of good suggestions and advices. Most other countries say advices as a plural. So that's... What we got in Stockholm, 48, a fellow old dude. Nice. And dude's got 1436, so he's ready to go again, man. Oh, yeah, FIDE. He got the FIDE boost over here. So, Anders, we want you to do your tactics rating. But otherwise, this is looking good. Clubs, Stockholm, Stockholm Dojo. I want to go to Stockholm. Nice. All right. Activity, lots of work, dude. And Anders did a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So we expect to see a game here. Loads. 42. All right, Anders. You're doing it correct to Mundo, man. You're doing it right. All right. This was played and analyzed fairly recently. So let's get into this. Tenth round of our club championship. Okay. So... Mark this. Here's, oh, yeah, look at that. So they got more time at move 40. Yeah. Um, great usage of time. You could just, let me just say something obvious, my friends. When we look at OTB games, the time is being spent appropriately. When we see online games, it's not. It's a clear distinction between the two kinds of games that are played. Okay, here we go. Good. Good. Okay. Hmm. And then here's kind of a problem here for you. Because if you have to take... Oh, well, okay, let's give it a try. Here, BC makes a lot of sense for black too. C3 we don't like. Uh, just because now, you know, he's better, well, he's got good development and everything. We're wasting a tempo. So, <clears throat> an idea I'd like you to consider here uh, is a little radical, and that is to play knight c3. So, this would put a lot of pressure on black. Um, we are threatening knight d5, or at least we're... We're telling him we are, you know? And if they take, I think that's probably a mistake. Uh, it's definitely a mistake to take again. If they take again, I think they're hosed because of this. And I just, your development is amazing and things are looking great. Um, in any case, one of the things is when you play the safety move, now you're down in time. And now when this goes right, you definitely we don't want you playing e5, something like knight d2, or as you say, queen e2. Okay. Here I realized that my position is not good at all, and I kind of panicked. I saw threats from black everywhere. I do too. Yeah, it's frightening. So, um, yeah, you're in big trouble here. And this is what happens when you don't develop your pieces, right? Let's <laughs> just be real clear. That's what happens when we don't develop our stuff. I think it's lost, by the way, or, or it's very plausible to me that this position is lost. For example, queen e2, queen d6, g3 is not going to save the day because of queen d1. Game over. Um, maybe queen 
e1, it's a pretty sad move, but at least there on queen d6, we can back it up and claim that we're not completely toast. You know? Okay, so queen c2. Good move. Rook e1. Good move. Now, actually, if you say to yourself, oh, wait a second. If, let's say you're black and you say to yourself, oh, wait a second. I'm up in time and I only have a smidge of time. Uh, then I And I got to do something with it. It's at that point you're going to find a move like 94. x -clan. Oh, and you wrote it. You wrote it. Yeah, good. So, castles. So notice what happened is he gave you a chance to come back into the game and lost time. Lost time. No, rook c8 doesn't do anything. Knight f3. I kind of like knight e4 personally. Okay, you're bringing out your people. Very good. Nah, superficial threats. Um... Okay, now you played a3. We need to talk about rook takes e7, but just because that rook is so powerful over there. All right, e6, snippos, hippos, and then you do this. Now, maybe, but could we do something with the pin? Well, maybe we can't. So you got to thank him when they play rook c8 like that. Queen d3, knight d5, queen d2. Okay, so then the obvious thing is that that's the case, then queen d2 now is more what you should be looking for, right? <clears throat> so you're losing time as well. Queen b6. Um... Now, I don't want to get too highfalutin over here, but maybe a move like queen a4 just to stop you from playing bishop h6 by touching the rook on d1. Good. And then you play knight d4. I think that my move in the game is safer and less complicated than the queen trade. <clears throat> okay, I see where you're going with that. Another very simple move would be, be g3 or h4. h4 would probably be the move to put the most pressure on your opponent because then they have to wonder about h5. And then let's say they play h5. Now you could comfortably play queen d4 and not worry too much because your king has a little bit of luft. Okay, so here we go. a, b, a, b. And you try to batten down the hatches here, 92. Boom, boom, queen c5. Queen d4. Queen takes. C takes. Maybe uh, the position is about equal, also with the queens on the board, but somehow it felt like white's position is easier to handle with queens off the board. Okay. Um... The real question is, how bad is it? <laughs> That's the question for us. How bad is it? <clears throat> Rook c2, king f1. It's definitely bad. I don't like f5. Um, or I'm just wondering actually about f5. So for example, King f6, it's hard for you to move, first of all. I'm trying to play king f5 to e4. If here, then this might be a winning pawn endgame. I'm not sure. It just looks very hard to deal with, but you might be able to hold it like this. In any case, f5, I don't know quite what it's doing. So this is a position, right, where, let's see, they thought two minutes on this move. I'm not sure I get that one. Uh, 
F4. So this one looks suspicious. And I totally agree with you that G4 looks better. But even after GF, you are going to be the one. By the way, F4 is very controversial because you're also giving the knight the E3 square. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes, son. Yikes. GF4. I traded it off. It, 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 that was, in principle, a an achievement for you. However, there's real important questions. Uh, I encourage you to look deeper at this position uh, in your analysis. It's a typical problem of the dojo that players don't go that deep in their endgame work. Is, for example, Rook A2 winning? That would be a key question. And the main question is... Uh, whew, that's rough. Because see, on D5, which might be a bailout opportunity, this with this threat is a bummer for you. right? So, if you have to play Rook... If you play H4, H3, you can play Rook H2 and it looks terrible. On rook d2, that's our big question. Is black winning this position? Mm, it looks like yes. This might win, but then let's look at here. Here, 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 here. And it looks like he's just in time to make your life miserable. Right? Because if you're once your king moves away, he's got king g4. This is the kind of thing where you can really go, get good at endings. And it was F4 really was, was the culprit. Okay, King G6, Rook D2. In principle, the correct move. King H5, H3. Rook A3, and I think this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Good, and now we have a drawn endgame. Okay. Now it sure is a drawn in. Good. Okay. <clears throat> so something, let's see. Um, one ancient rule that I'm not sure I always appropriately follow is the Soviet rule of not changing the structure before time control. And notice that black isn't really doing all that much to you here. I get it that it's scary. For sure, it's scary. You've, you're in a passive position. But F4 creates more problems than it solves, right? And even though I like G4 better for black, I think you are in big trouble after Rook A2. At least it would be an interesting thing to analyze. Okay. Good. That was well done. Honors, I'm impressed, dude, by the work that you're putting in. And it seems like you're already ready to graduate one more time. You know, you're ready to go again. Schlabang. Okay, well done. Get that tactics rating, buddy. Next up, we got Barnstorm. Lots of practice game, game analysis, and tactics training help the most. So, 1224 looks good. Has graduated once before. Doesn't have the tactics rating yet. Cool that USCF is the default. Clubs. Well, all right. Lots of work. Lots of work. We're going to go down one to see how they did it. Looking great, dude. Looking really strong. Um, games. No games. Barnstorm, buddy. It does make my current task a little easier. Okay, <laughs> but we do want you to have games. Next up is Paul Sherman. So many points and no games. Barnstorm. Come on, buddy. Paul Sherman. I'm 43 and picked up chess when I was 37. I play with considerably more passion than ability, but I'm always looking to improve. Nice. Okay, 1208. Made it. Look at that nice pop. Tactics rate, 1300. We'll have an official rating once we get the Polgar test sim. It does have a USCF rating as well. 
All right, let's click in here. Clubs, no clubs. Activity, lots of activity. We're going to go to the next one down. Maybe no games. Let's see. No games. Makes my life a little easier, but Paul, we need some games for you, buddy. Domvas, double graduation. That's impressive. So a double graduation. Look at that spike. Vroom! Wow, that is an impressive one. So we went from 1,005 to 1,201. That's definitely a double graduation. We got some tactics, not yet. Um, that's great that you had that great event. Okay, so clubs, SF Bay Area, the home in many ways of the dojo. Activity, nice and well, it's a double graduation, so everything is here. Looks like we have a lot of games and analysis. Let's get into it. Loads. Oh, 22. That's how they did it. Okay, this is Dominic Vasquez. Queen stem declined. Let's look at if we got um, no clocks. And looks like this is an OTB game, right? All right, so D4. Good. Okay. DC4, frisky. E3. So now white is a little bit better. Okay, but that's okay. You're a little bit passive. Um, and it's the DC4 move, which is, I guess, the culprit because it allows white to control the center and to develop by taking on c4 in one tempo. Here it's a slightly difficult position for you, but definitely I think b6 is the right move to get bishop b7 going. I made four knight moves in a row, breaking all dojo and opening rules. Correct. Queen c2, mistake. Bang, good move. Bang, good move. And now you play b6, good, good. Now you're okay, now you're okay. a4, I don't know. Now, one thing I want to encourage you is, I get it, a5 is what they want to do. And you're playing a5 is honestly not a bad move. I just, don't be reflexive about it. a4 is not a good move. It feels like a tilty move. What would be better? Some kind of rook move, rook ac1, rook fd1, something like that. Hmm. Okay. Good. Poor. Not a fan of this one. It willingly gives black two bishops first two knights. Yeah. What are we doing? That isn't it. C5. Exclam. Knight B5. Okay. Now you took. Are we in a hurry to take that thing? Um, let's just say the natural move would be C takes D4. Mm, and now things are unclear. He should play, well, he should play like, actually maybe it's not so simple for him. Yeah, he should play DC5 with the point that on Bishop B2, you at least have to worry about that. What is the eval of this position? I don't know. I don't know. But at least this would give him a little heartache. So queen d7. Rook c7. Okay. Using the pin. c4. Now what I want you to see about this move that's controversial is, well, it's a great move because you're winning the pawn. But you are blocking off your bishop. Good move. Now we can hold that pawn forever. Hmm. The knight isn't doing anything to you, buddy. That knight isn't doing anything. You play queen b4, queen b3 maybe. Queen b3 is a little frisky, but maybe you could do it. I don't know why the knight's there. Good move. Okay. Wow, that's fancy. 
I don't know about, about this, the sacking the pawn. It's important to see that now after you sacked it, maybe black and white can dream about somehow surviving this. Yeah. One clever move here, for example, would be knight e6 with the thought that if he goes rook e7, you could play queen d2. Nah. Maybe. Right, and then the question would be here, 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 here. And maybe you're still murdering him. But here now that the knight's secure... I don't know. It's there's, there's question. You're still doing great. You're still doing great. Okay, so knight d3, but that move isn't it, right? Queen c2. Okay, simple and strong. Look at those pieces. King f1, b5. Now, in general, you should believe that rook a4 won't work because your uh, play will be too strong. So for example, here, 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 and king f3 will lose to c2. King e1, in any case, I wanna do this, here, check, here, gone. Okay, but b5 is the safe move. King e2. I don't like that one. Obviously, didn't understand my ideas in this move, but I wanted to claim the a file. Okay, 7. Now, that isn't it. So, one of the things that I want you to see is you're, you're losing your mind, and all of a sudden, white's the one who is starting to get good play. Now, again, you're losing your mind. If you're going to play rook a8, it was time to do it. Uh-oh. Weird stuff is happening here. Okay, white played terribly the last sequence of moves. And what happened was white traded off their very strong rook. And, you know... Rook g7 looks like the right move here. And that wasn't it. Good move. And what I really like about rook d8 is you're trading off their good piece. And now you're going to have two connected past pawns, and it's over. Oh, yeah. Very nice. That isn't it. That isn't it. Oh, gosh. Um... I definitely prefer b3 here uh, before taking. White said he was hoping for a stalemate. So here's the thing, though, my friend. <laughs> In order to win this, if he just... Oh, wait a second. No, I take it all back. He's in stalemate, so he's, he's toast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, easy win then. Your way was fine. I take it all back. Easy chess. Okay, well done. So, that was good. That was good. And a little passive in the opening, but your opponent gave you time. And what we've seen is that's really where it counts. In the, in the end game, the guy gave you time as well. Okay, so well done. Flying Pris says, hello, I am new here. So what do we do here? Well, you join the dojo, you follow the program, and right now we are looking at the people who have graduated. And uh, here we go, another one from Sam Bumatella. That's my just that's my boomer take on Sam Bumatella. Sam Bumatella, uh, fortunately their rating crashed after they graduated. Sometimes it happens. 
Pull, go oh, he's got a good tactics rating, dude. Okay, this seems legitimate. Probably the PR survival could give you a little higher than that. But we have a legitimate rating here. Cool that they did so well on the Polgar mate test. Okay, so here we go. Clubs, Asian Dojo, nice. Activity. Uh, maybe no games because it looks like tactics and end game. Let's see. No. So obviously we want a game. Today I feel thankful though because we have 50 graduates this week. I'm losing my mind. You guys are trying to kill me. Look at this. Just a couple more to go, cry. Oh, you got a lot more to go, cry. Oh, I'm dying. <laughs> you guys are killing me today, man. You guys are killing me today. <clears throat> A.S. Hegg says, 3.0 is an incredible improvement over 1.0, which was the last time he tried the training program. Dude, we had a Google Doc back then. The task calendar and refined Discord are very helpful for my improvement. Some of the task descriptions may need slight alterations to make them clearer. Yeah, totally agree. Okay. A.S. Hegg, here we go. A.S. Hegg also maybe lost some rating after they graduated. Tactics isn't quite there yet. We wanted to take the Polgar test. And let's go clubs. Adult Improver activity. A lot of points being done here. Uh-huh. A, a lot of tactics. Let's click in there. Oh, it's looking good, man. Looking real good. Okay. And the tactics, you see, this is somebody doing more tactics than other parts of their game. Yeah, once they do the test, it'll be interesting to see if that is higher than their cohort average. Here's A.S. Hegg. Okay. So it, oh, mark it as reviewed. We'll look at the time. No, no clock times. Okay. C5. Usually this is not what we want. Um, I think we're going to flip it because I believe you are black. Yeah. Okay. Incorrect because... You are appreciative of any trade, and this just helps you. Good recapture. You could take with a knight, too, but I like what you did. Good. Knight de2. Rook fd8. Okay, we're intending d5, I guess. Bishop g5. Um, I like h6 for you here. I do not understand a6. Because white will eventually want to play knight d5 at some point. And I think I'd already just play it right now. Um, if you imagine h6, bishop h4, g5, bishop g3, d5, you get what you wanted, right? You get what you wanted. Okay, bishop f6 wasn't it uh, at all. They've given you their good bishop, but well, actually they, we see their intention is to play knight d5 um, after you play queen c7. Right, the b5 move maybe. Okay, actually let's just say it's at least a little clever. You should, okay, queen b6. Okay, it's clever what you're doing. Boom. Are we get are, is our queen gone? If our queen isn't gone, then b4 is a mistake. It's looking good. Now queen d3 would be my question. Do plays this way, now your queen is safe. That wasn't it. Waste of time. F5 now. Good move. Okay. All right, now look at how good your bishop is. Mm. Okay, you played bishop e5. Why isn't rook bd8 winning? That would be my question. It looks very strong. You did that. 
We get some snips. Notice that you activated the rook on b3 and you blocked your rook on e8. Here's definitely where you could spend more time in the analysis. Now you invite him back. Frisky. What are we doing? We require A.S. Heg. <laughs> we require some thought here, buddy. You guard, don't you? Oh, the problem is if you play Bishop C5. Yeah, this is all needed some help. Because now it now it don't look good. Boom. I'm too slow and too underpowered for this to work. It kind of felt like your annotations hit a wall. As maybe you did in the game, too. So, uh... A little, little deeper with, with the analysis could have helped. But congratulations. Well done. And yeah. Next up is Alec. Alec hasn't done that much work. So we don't know quite yet know what's going on. Isn't quite there with the rating either. Clubs, activity, games. We've got some games. Let's just look at ratings real quick. Doesn't not there yet. I encourage you to do it. They're both kind of similar. First annotated game. All right, good. Fine. Fine. And normally here, we would want to play a move like d3 or even d4. Because e5 is now going to go into a French structure where black has traded off their bad bishop. Right. Queen b6, c5, good, I have a good note. Finally gets it in. And here, yeah, it's, a, it's an uncomfortable position. You're just getting worked around a little bit. Um, cd is definitely an advantage for black, but he goes bishop e7. Oh, that wasn't it. My opponent's idea was to protect f7. Well, dude, what are we talking about? <laughs> uh, take on d4, buddy. Take on d4. Collapse the center. <coughs> Wild night, night there. <coughs> Check to the miserable king. <clears throat> mm, that wasn't it. Okay, so now you have, you should have reasonable control here. This move feels slow. It would be nice to investigate just some other options for you here. Coming to mind, for example, is queen g5 followed by bishop f4. There you're touching this nut and this nut. Good. Uh, 94 is a big question for me. I don't know. Oh, 94, queen e7, mate. Thank you very much. Uh-oh, he missed that. Oh, buddy. Welcome to the dojo. <laughs> you got him, buddy. You got him. Yeah, that was good. Uh, actually, a reasonable amount of time spent by both players, too. Yeah. Black, no, not so much, though. He's cruising in those last couple moves. He'd run out of gas. I'm a victim of the program's success. It's true, dude. I'm dying over here. Look at how many people we got. Next up, we got John. It's like I want them, of course, to do games, but I, I can't. I can't do a, I, I'm losing my mind. John's at 1,085. You guys, a little bit, you know, do it when you, when you actually graduate. Here we want the Polgar Tess. Clubs. Portland, nice. Activity, looking good. Looks real good. Games, we got some. So, oh, we're definitely going to do uh, Arborea, friend of the dojo. Iggy Toff's making some uh, business. This is a Saturday morning game. Looks good. Wow, this is all very fancy. Knight BD7. Bishop. So, um... Right. Queen, bishop e2, it's passive anyway. And right, e5 looks good. 
Now e5 may be. The knight has no good squares. So we can criticize Arborea maybe for playing a little quickly there. Now they're in trouble. e6. Okay, I think that's fine. Good move. Now you're playing great. And that's very controversial. Okay. So h4 looks good, but we got to mention ye old knight e4 right now, right? I mean, we got to at least mention it. We got to at least mention it. Boom. Doing great. Good move. Okay. And if this doesn't work, by the way, we can consider uh, um, 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 h5 directly. It's a hard life for him right here. Good move. Dang. Oh, that's, that's going to be game, isn't it? Bang. That's going to be mate. Miss mate in one. <laughs> uh, that's pretty fun. Okay. So, it's okay. You know, you take the queen. You know, I might have done it too. Just been, just been like, why aren't you resigning, Arborea? Why aren't you resigning? So, well done. I like the, I like this is all really appropriate notes. And um, so from Arborea's perspective, right, you got to be watching for this e5. In a lot of ways, bishop e2, the only intent, I think, of this move is that you are preventing knight h5. You know, so on e5, there's, you know, I'm sure that was your intention. So black was just going about the regular business, and now they're going to they're gonna face the business now. Yeah. So well done. And um, I thought that was pretty clean. This move, c6, wasn't it, but it's hard for, uh, it's hard for black to find some moves, you know. So that was great. That was our clock usage again. All right, well done, John. Now we got 1%. I remember one. I started chess three years ago, and so lucky this program started as well and helped me find the structure of training. Happy anniversary to us both. That's right, 1%. All right, we got some fathers. Nice, dude. Let's follow 1%. 1,008. Fine. Tactics, let's get that done, one. And um, so, clubs, Asian dojo, nice activity. A lot of game analysis. And then in this time breakdown, I don't know, man. <laughs> it looks like, well, he's done these things, okay. Maybe not logging the times with the games and analysis. 1% is doing a lot of work, dude. Let's look at this one. Uh oh wait, that isn't it. Let's look at this one. The drought continues. Busy and tiring week. Headache, anxiety. Yep. I hear you. I actually need to do this before I forget. I'm about to lose my mind, everybody. I'm, I'm running on empty. I'm running on empty. Here we go. Okay. 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 Uh-huh. Bishop a4. Bishop e2 makes a lot of sense in this situation, doesn't it? I like bishop b3 there as well. Notice this is a standard trap because it won't work as so well. Bam! Bam! Or if you want to get... No, yeah, that's the right way of doing it. I was going to get super fancy, but you know, sometimes you don't want to get so fancy. The guy is not developing. And now DE, well, DE, just take the pawn boss. You know, and then he's got to throw in that move, and that's going to give you the development of your queen and break the pin. <clears throat> Looks wrong. H3, good. Now, Baus, what are you doing? Win the pawn, buddy! Win the Pieska and the center. <clears throat> So 
So notice the knight on a5 is kind of a chump, and you're like, you know, encouraging him to take it. And, you, you know, okay, knight c4, it's true. It controls the pawn on e5. Okay, so now he's not going to lose the pawn. I don't like it. <clears throat> All right. Rookie one, knight f1, knight g3 might be a thought. We're just losing time. I see the structure isn't weakened, bud. The tempo is important. <clears throat> Whoa. Whoa. Uh, I'm confused, too. You can't play chess like this. You No. B3. Nah, now you rip it open. Bang. 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 I don't know. You got a lot of different moves here. Um, that might work. But the prosaic knight h4 is hell of a drug, too. You're playing in with queen h5. So, no, you're losing time. Oh, my God. Ah. <laughs> now, EF for sure. EF for sure. Come on. Oh, no. Oh, who knows what this guy's doing. He's lost his mind completely. C4. Why are we? Why? Are, uh, maybe it's fine. I don't know, but Bishop G4 is my question here. He doesn't do it. They be, these people aren't appreciating the time factor. Okay, first of all, ED is possible. ED, Bishop B2, uh, D, E. Very fancy, but you're taking with a, a threat to his coconut. Boom. And now he's got a... I don't know what he's going to do, actually. It looks like you're just winning. Boom, boom, boom. Fine, fine. Bad move. Yeah, Bishop B2. You didn't, You could have been playing Bishop B2 forever. Oh, no. Ah! Oh, my Lord. It just keeps going and going, doesn't it? Wow, that was a fancy move, rook g3. Oh, he tricked himself. What do you, what? Oh, why don't we play king g2 or knight h2? Why are we giving him the pieskis? Why does he, ah, oh, I don't understand. Everybody's giving away everything like it's Christmas. Ah! <laughs> so 1%, buddy. Buddy, there's a lot of hanging stuff. You're hang okay, two things. You're hanging stuff and you're hanging tempi. K. Wilhelm says, just checking. If I miss the Twitch stream, are all graduate shows put on YouTube? Right. It's put into our second YouTube, which is called Chess Dojo Live. Okay, so 1%. It's very simple. Don't give your opponent Tempe. Don't give him stuff. Now we got Elysian. Boom. So, <laughs> Mine Voxel is watching on YouTube and says, it sounds like World War II over here. Three. Okay. 1098. Well done. Ready to almost to graduate again with Elysian over here. In Dojo 1.0, clubs, the ADHD Dojo, we got a lot of those people. 71 points, lot, looking good, okay? Games, Elysian, is he serious? Is he serious, I believe, is also in the Dojo. We'll mark this as reviewed. And we have a typical online game problem where Elysian stopped thinking. So here we go. Ninety-five is generally considered the reason why people don't play this move order. But we are developing, and I'm not going to complain. Ooh, that looks wrong. So um, on H six, we got to ask about this variation. 
That looks winning, right? Because you, you got him. All right, tactics. Now elision. Got to move a little slower, buddy. H6. You move that instantly. So that's called a reactive move. And here, too, we need to ask about knight takes g5. Can black break the pin? It's not going to be easy. That's all I know. <laughs> that's all I know. It's not going to be easy. And you write this in a note. Now your bishop is like poor, right? And, and uh, again, d4 is just crushing. There you go. Hey, well, what, why are we playing d5? Okay. It gives you two pieces. Thank you very much. Oh, check the miserable king. Yeah, now you're crushing him. Okay, so I take back a little bit my uh, comment because I can imagine this just being winning and, you know, the guy's just completely lost here. Now he should resign. Oh my God, he really plays on. Okay, you won this game. Uh-oh, wait a second. You lost the... Oh no, you're still winning this though. It doesn't matter. <laughs> They're still winning this bad boy. All right, well done. So that was Elision playing with Izzy Sirius, also in the program. Harper Almo, second graduation. I was hesitating to do it because one, I had not completed most of the cohort task, and two, I have fallen back into an in uncomfortable level of tunnel vision. Bruce was kind enough to discuss the rationale behind the dojo graduation algorithm on the recent 3.0 tactics test stream and convinced me to trust it. So here I am graduating once again. I have not changed my focus for the upcoming cohort since previous graduation. Principal chess, stay away from short games, analyze games. Changes I will make. More regular playing, increased interaction with dojo members, Secondarily, I will get more comfortable with the Discord and Dojo software interfaces to smooth out my interaction with others. Okay, cool. So, first of all, it's always a big milestone to go into the 1,000 plus category. Oh, classical and period guitars, a, a luthier, a luthier. So might not have made it according to this one but maybe here, we want you to do your tactics rating. So, um, clubs, adult improver, activity, a lot of work being done. Okay, second graduation, We've got some games, all right. So I'm gonna be kind to myself and take the, <laughs> take the shorter game. All right, let's look at Harper. So far, genius level, that's okay. Fine, as long as you're developing. We're not saying anything. Bishop g5, castles, fine, you're developing. Fine, you're developing. Okay. Weird, right? So, both sides have played totally fine chess here, and now this move is terrible. And now you waste time. Okay, so let's talk about it. What moves would be better? A move like rook ae1 might be good. At aiming at some point for f4. Weird. That must have been his weird intention with knight e8. f4, good move. Good move. He's just moving around and around, right? Good move. He's just moving around and around. Ah, uh, that can't be bad. Oh, it's going to get frisky over here. And yes, EF5 looks winning. Knight F6. Now you go back to Bishop D3, of course. Yeah, and what we're going to say is, I'm imagining that you... Wait, what's going on? What was the time situation here? Oh, because it says 54 seconds, so I don't know what to do with that. Um, that you weren't thinking here. Now he's back in the game. Now he's really back in the game. Now he's really back in the game. No entiendo. Oh, man. 
You were killing him, Bows. Now, maybe this is all time pressure here. It's a little bit weird because there isn't a time graph here, but this thing is kind of like reducing in time. Yeah. So. Notice, at this level, they're going to do weird stuff like 98. And then that's when we start thinking about getting after him. Okay? They will give you that all the time. All right, Snore. We got two more. I didn't get to do all the stuff for my cohort, but definitely found some benefit with the Polgar mates in two. I really struggle with these tacks and think I have some trouble with calculations in general. Played a lot of 1510, but little longer time controls. Yeah, new chances in the cohort. Now, once you go above, right, we want you playing longer games. Here's Snore. We're going to follow Snore. Didn't quite make it. Didn't quite make it. We want him to do the tactics. Norwegian Chess Improver. We got one game from Snore. All right, local club, 45. Let's see, actually, if we can mark this and then... Oh, it's not up there. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. D5 is now a good move. D5 is now a good move. D5 is a good move. There we go. ED makes more sense to me. This isn't bad, though. Okay. Oh, that wasn't it. Thank you very much. Welcome to the dojo. Let's trade it off. There we go. Easy chess. Oh, he's just hanging. This is a yard sale over here. Boom. Well, you should thank him and play queen takes f4. Ooh, that was clever. He's just hanging all his stuff. This is the yard sale over here. You're killing him. Look at this thing. Oh, what a joy. All right. So, yeah, we're playing somebody's hanging all their business, and you are stronger. Be good to see the times. But I'm glad that you did this annotation. It was probably your first, right? Probably your first annotation. Great that you're playing an OTB game, too. Okay, my friends, we got one more. And this is Tall Huber over here. And, uh, dude, look, look at that epic jump. Epic jump over here. We'll follow. Dojo 1.0. Graduated multiple times. We want him to do the tactics business. Dial in his PR survival. Clubs. North Texas. Okay. DFW. Activity. All right, we're going to go back down one. Looks like it was a double graduation or something, you know, because he was just flying up there. So 54. I'm going to guess we have a game. This will be our last game. Hopefully I will not pass out in the middle of this. We'll mark it as reviewed. And, oh, it's good time usage. Um, okay, so here we go. So this is generally wrong because you're going to get smacked by d5. There it comes. So you lost the tempo. And now when you take, you open the bishop on c8. Yeah. And now, good evaluation, by the way. Mm -hmm. Good play by black. This is what happens when we lose time. Check the miserable king. Knight d2, bishop d4. Maybe they have other moves too, but okay, bishop d4. No, I don't like that move. Yeah. Yeah, so good question. I like your analysis. We want to wonder, can we get away with that rook b7 stuff? Um, another question here could be, are we getting wasted with f5? 
I might even want to play this move first, so I protect my rook. Let's say you go back, and then I play f5, and I just ask, is there a way for you to stop me from getting all your coconuts, you know? Another more basic move might be, actually, uh, bishop takes, pawn takes, knight d4, queen f2, rook e3, uh-oh. And did I miss it here? No, you got to get rid of the bishop first. So I think you're actually correct, dude. I think castling is both sober and sound. Rook takes, okay. But now bishop e3 followed by f by knight e4, right? So we needed to play a, b. Um, good move by black. Good move. Boom. Yeah, now you got to play queen f7. Now you're still worse, I think, but you got to play queen f7. Now you need to fix your knight somehow. C4, isn't it? Knight d2. Fix your knight. Now he's got a simple plan of just messing with you over there. Muchos passives. Muchos passives here. I don't understand that move. Rook, rook d8 or something looks great. Uh, here we could try knight f4. Nah, that's a hard life. Mate. Yeah. Okay. Um, what I want you to focus on as you go forward, first of all, great notes, I really like it, is um, that we want you to focus on time in the opening, and this move ultimately is going to give your opponent a tempo and is going to open this thing up. Then when we get to this fascinating position, uh, castles, you need to get out of dodge, right? So this is a clear warning sign about like, no, you got to be real careful stealing a pawn like this when your king is so in trouble. And yay, yeah, he played nice moves here. Okay, my friends, I think I'm going to end it. So, um, I'm going to make sure, yeah, that was, a, that was the longest grad show ever. I think yesterday I did like two hours. Today I did almost three and a half. Dude, that's a lot. My eyes hurt. We're going to raid. Who are we going to raid? Chess Sharks, friend of the dojo.